Hi guys, I'm doing a review on the FCM 50T today. This was requested by a subscriber. However, it might be the start of a new series on my channel. I might start doing a bit of a hidden gem kind of thing, you know, going and making videos on tanks that have been in the game, you know, quite a while, if not since the start. And they might have been buffed or they've continued to be good, you know, throughout the whole time they've been in the game. And the FCM 50T is one of them. Now, this is a French premium heavy tank tier 8. It's got preferential matchmaking, which is really, really nice. The tank has a couple of downsides and a whole load of upsides. Now the downsides are the fact that it is gigantic, as you can tell here by me driving past the other tanks, and this dwarfs them. And the other downside is that it really doesn't have much armor. Now when you combine that with how big the tank is, it is a very big, very easy to pen target. So that is quite a downside. Now the two it can some shots. It's not very thick, but it's rounded as you can see. So if shots hit at a bit of a funny angle either to the top or the bottom, then they can bounce off, although the bottom can be a short trap. The upper plate is about 120 and it's angled a little bit as you can see. But again, it's not great. It's going to bounce some shots if you're top tier maybe, if you're angled. But it's not armour that you should really rely on. As for the upside, one, as you've been able to tell by how fast I got here, the tank is really quick. It's got a very powerful engine. This can drive around at about 50 km per hour and it can reach that speed really easily. The gun, I know the first person view there was a bit rickety because there's no stabilization on them, but it aims in really quick. Its accuracy is about 0.32 with an aiming time of around 2.33 seconds, something like that. So for all intents and purposes, it is a very good medium tank gun on a heavy tank. And that's basically what you're getting with this. So you're going to be firing every around six seconds depending on your setup obviously you're going to want a gun rammer with it but that's standard for most tanks the only downside with the gun is that it requires a large caliber gun rammer instead of a medium one so it costs you 500k instead of 250k that's the only issue i've actually got with the gun other than that it's got good accuracy decent penetration 212 on the standard about 259 on the premium it's not bad and the good gun, coupled with a good speed, means that early on you can get to really good locations on the map and take out enemy medium tanks and other spotters, things like that. And it's got plenty of HP as well, so it's good for DPMing low targets, like I say, um, especially those early game medium tanks. Now, I took a shot to the main gun there. I took a shot before as well that I'm pretty sure hit the gun but did damage. I'm not sure what that's all about. Either way though, you can't really expect to block damage in this. The turret can, as you saw there, but other than the turret, don't rely on it at all. This kind of pitched firefight isn't a kind of situation I like being in in the tank. I don't mind so much if I'm facing tanks that have got bad accuracy, but the FE201 doesn't, and while it's actually a bit of a medio oh, mediocre sorry, tank, the guy who's driving it is doing a really good job. So I backed off, and I'm seeing if I can get any shots on the Centurion, but I can't. Now, I don't want to keep fighting the FE201 at range. I didn't want to rush him before because they had support, but they seem to have gone. Now here, the tracks bounce a shot. The tracks are quite thick, so if you're in an urban fight, you can side scrape with this tank and hope the tracks take the shot. It's not great, but it's always worth knowing how to make your armor work the best it can for you. And this tank can't brawl in an urban situation, you know, with the upper plate and things. So you can use those tracks if need be. Now I've closed range here because I want to make sure my shots hit this FE201. If I can make it so all my shots hit, I can outtrade him because I do more damage than he does. And because I've rushed him and I've put on an aggressive play, he's rushing some of his shots here. I think I might have, you know, um, startled him a little bit by getting up close. He's done the right thing, he's, you know, his back's off, but this isn't really a situation he can win just because of the fact that we've got similar HP, but I do, you know, twice the damage and have control of the engagement. But the guy did play well. If his support hadn't have left him, he could have caused the team some serious issues, but they left him all on his own and he, you know, he put up a fight to the end. Now, he nearly got lucky. Artillery nearly took me out. I'd love to go kill them right now, to be fair. But looking at the map, I can see that our red tanks in the little trench are uh, surrounded. A lot of other heavy tanks can't relocate like this one. The speed it's got. A makes it fun to play and B really does help it out for relocating around the map and things like that. Due to the amount of prem spamming game, a lot of the tanks that have got a lot of armor don't feel it anyway, you know. A lot of them just get penned regardless. 
and end up just slow. As this one's not. Now I do bounce a shot here. And I'm spotted now by the medium tank. So I've switched to premium shells because I can't afford these shots to miss. These are the good rate of fire. I can take the IS-6 out with three shots. But I need them to hit into pen. So that's why I switched to the premiums. I just have weak spots the AP can pen. But like I said, I just don't have time. What I'm doing here is actually risky. I'm lucky that the motherland hasn't actually penned a shot just yet. So I'm loaded again. Thanks to that amazing rate of fire. And then it's time to go. I don't want to go in the ditch in case they've got any tanks up on the cliff top above it. So I'm going to go around. It was risky. I could have taken a shot on the side there from a motherland. But thankfully you missed. Now I'm going to zoom around here. Because the red team know full well that we've got tanks in the ditch. And I find the artillery. Managed to put a shot into him easy enough. Again, the gun is fantastic. But he's loaded and he's staring straight at me. That is not a pretty sight. But thankfully, he just about missed. Now, if he'd have killed me, I would have uploaded the video anyway. But thankfully, he didn't. Now, the tank's got a 400 meter base view range, which is fantastic for spotting and things like that. They've got a tank destroyer left. I didn't see him on the base driving past. I would have done. Unless he was camping bush right at the very back. I figured he was up here, and he is. Again, I'm able to climb the hill that fast that he just doesn't really have the time to react and traverse his tank around. And he's gone. And now I can just lean over this, use a gun depression, and take these tanks out. I'm going to focus on the ISM because he's a bigger threat than the Tiger P. And they were dead in a few seconds, and that's a six kill game, and it didn't require, you know, that much really. It was just a case of driving around and shooting what was in front of it. Tank does require, you know, some uh, some awareness of the map. But so does every tank, to be fair. You need to know what's going on. But that's the main thing with it, really. Just to try not to get yourself in front of loads of red guns, because it's a big target and the armor's not great. People will focus this over other tanks, because people always try shooting the tank that they're more likely to pen. You got to bear that in mind. Overall, though, I'd say even I bought this tank full price, and I'd say full price, it was worth it. Even more so now, because Wargaming gave it a little buff a while ago. But if you can pick it up cheap, then I'd definitely recommend it. I don't see many of them in game, and in my opinion, this is the best preferential, uh, preferential matchmaking tank in the game. The STA2 is really, really good, but the gun on this is better. I find my STA2, the gun throws me a little bit. Now, I've not got a Panther 88. I've heard that tank is really good as well. But this tank can do pretty much what those medium tanks can do, apart from it gets more HP. So that's why I prefer this one. Other stats, as you can see, they're fantastic. Amazing gun, great engine power, great view range. The size and the armor are the only downsides for this tank. Now, I'll load up and show you the armor now. As you can see, it's not great. Due to the curves on the front of the turret, you can bounce some shots there. However, the bottom half can be a shot trap and send the shots in through the roof. The roof armor in general on the tank is paper, so if artillery shell hits you, then, you know, good night. But overall, like I say, it's got a lot of upsides and only two downsides. And the gun, yeah, seems to be amazing now. It used to be about 0.36 accuracy, I believe. But now, yeah, it's around 0.32. I might actually compare it to the Primo Victoria. I think that's the best gun on a turreted tier 8 I've got. So this one is 230 for aiming time, uh, two, and not 32 on the accuracy. And this one is 230 on the aiming time and not 33 on the accuracy. So the FCM has actually got a better gun than the Primo Victoria. And that's saying something because that's got the best gun, I believe, of the Premium Centurions. I'm not sure if there is a better gun other than this. So yeah, fantastic gun and an amazing tank. It's one I do recommend. It can be a bit tricky to get used to, but once you do, it's a very, very good credit earner. Anyway, thanks for watching the review, guys. If you liked it, then please hit the like button or subscribe. I really do appreciate it. Thanks.